So the first thing that we've got to look at in terms of corporate governance is to work out what it actually means. And that's probably even more important in a subject like corporate governance because uh, the term itself hasn't been around for that long. So let's uh, get started. So in this slide, what we can see is a series of logos from organisations that have all been touched by corporate governance scandals. Um, these scandals can go back a long way, say in the case of HIH Insurance and Enron, probably two of our most famous examples. They include everything from like uh, environmental disasters at BHP, uh, ethical lapses at AWB, through to, you know, relatively recent scandals such as the uh, Volkswagen problems in terms of the, um, the corruption of the legislative process about uh, pollution outputs, uh, and the Centro case, which is something we'll come to in terms of uh, our discussions of solvency and director's duties. So corporate governance involves uh, the decisions that occur uh, in companies which are separate legal entities. Now, as I was saying, the term corporate governance has only been around for about 20 years. So that means that it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, some people emphasize, for instance, the issues involving uh, compliance and legality, while others see a much broader role in terms of performance of the organization as well. What we've put together here are a couple of examples of definitions. So the Australian Securities Exchange talks about governance as being a system by which the companies are directed and managed. So what's that system doing? Well, it's defining the objectives and then looking at how risk is optimised to get better performance. Tricker uh, was another, is another famous um, author in the area, probably though some would consider the father of corporate governance and popularised it in the 1980s. He says that governance is concerned with direction and control. So again, we can get this idea of strategy and direction and control and monitoring. He also broadens it out to look at the various stakeholders to say it's about the rights and responsibilities of those stakeholders. Cadbury was a famous uh, UK authority on governance. And he again brings, starts to bring in these different stakeholders by talking about the balance between economic and social goals. So governance is about how do we balance these goals between individuals and the community. And that governance is the framework, you know, that's, that's kind of like that idea of it being a system, isn't it? A framework to encourage an efficient use of resources and really importantly, accountability. Because the company is a separate legal entity, it actually means that we need to think about how we're going to get accountability and alignment into the system. And in reality, there is no one single definition that works well. The one that particularly strikes me practically as being important is this one that Tricker came up with later, where he starts saying, look, if we're going to talk about our companies are run, we've got to be able to differentiate between management and governance. And so management is about running business and governance is about making sure the business is run right, whatever that means. The way to think about governance is, we, is that we've got these four elements of governance. In terms of predictability, what we're talking about is that our system and the outputs are predictable. That includes everything from the system of governance through to the systems in an organisation to ensure we get predictable performance. So one of the problems with governance is you can think about it as being a kind of problem of levels. Some people, when they talk about governance, are talking about the system of governance, like Australia's corporate governance system. Other people are talking about the corporate governance uh, of a particular company, so of company A. Some people, when they talk about corporate governance, are, are really talking about maybe director's duties or, or what the individuals hold. So we have these different ideas of governance as a system, at the company level, and also at the individual level. And part of what we have to be able to deal with is this ambiguity in the use of the term. We, we're going to talk 
a fair bit about the company level. Um, in lectures uh, two and three, we talk about duties a lot, so we're really focusing on the individual level. When we talk about international systems of governance uh, in week six, we're talking about the systemic level. Uh, and when we're talking about the board or company, which is really many of the other lectures, we're talking about this in-between level. So it can mean all of those things. Now, what we're actually looking for from governance is a sense of predictability. So what we want are processes and outcomes in an organisation that are relatively predictable, you know, within the vagrancies and uncertainties of business life. It also talks about the system being one that it has the rule of law and that we get the same application of, um, of the law to uh, different organisations and individuals within our governance system. Um, transparency is uh, something that's looked for in terms of corporate governance, making sure that people who need the information have it available to help them uh, make decisions and that there's clarity or transparency about how decisions, outcomes are made, as well as how even laws and rules operate. We need accountability in any good corporate governance system uh, so that decision makers are answerable for the decisions that they make. Uh, otherwise, we'd get aberrant behaviour in the business community. Uh, we need accountability, which also helps us set the KPIs or the criteria which we're going to judge performance against and it allows for those enforcement mechanisms. And finally, governance is about participation. In, in several of those definitions, it talked about the different stakeholders. So governance sets up the framework, the processes that allow different, different groups, different stakeholders to be engaged, uh, either, say, as members or shareholders who elect the directors, right through to other stakeholders who have accountability mechanisms through the law and other mechanisms. So this kind of leads us to a bit of a challenge that governance in reality is really more about a series of balances, balancing the various stakeholder interests that we actually need to deal with, balancing uh, regulation with over-regulation in terms of what we ask of companies and balance in terms of getting con the conformance performance balance right uh, in our organisations. So in terms of balancing um, stakeholders, you can see that there's a whole list of various stakeholders, and we'll come to that, I think, in around Lecture 5, when we talk about CSR and its role in corporate governance. We also need to balance regulation. We have different ways of regulating black-letter law, uh, regulation through various stakeholder concentration mechanisms and shareholder concentration. Market discipline is a form of regulation that people can buy and sell shares and we also have contracts between various parties regulate their behaviour, um, as does self-regulation, where people adopt codes of conduct, say, which we'll discuss a bit later uh, in this session, um, as well as industry codes and things like that are all forms of self-regulation. The final balance that we need to think about is the balance between compliance and performance. So uh, organisations do need to struggle with making sure that they um, get their performance, whatever that might be, for profit or not for profit, as high as possible. But that needs to be balanced with making sure that it's done uh, at least legally and within the bounds of our ethics and those goals that the organisation sets for itself. So the board then is really looking at how it can strive for that above average performance, taking account of risk and also taking account of its legal uh, balance. I think uh, that gives you an idea that the term corporate governance is actually quite complex. It can have lots of different meanings, um, but we're going to deal with it in several of those ways in the course. We're going to deal with looking at governance as a system. Governance is something that happens within an organisation, a corporation, and the impact of governance at the individual level. Uh, in the next upcoming video, we're going to start looking uh, at one aspect of decision making that's involved in governance, which is ethics.